Hi, in this video we're going to look at an example of a control structure problem. What are control structures? Well, we've introduced a few so far. There are two that let us ask questions about the world, the if statement or the if else statement. And there's two that let us repeat code, the for loop, which lets us repeat code for a fixed number of times, or the while loop, which lets us repeat code as long as some condition is true. These are known as the control structures because they direct the control flow of the program. Let's look at an example of how we can use these. We have Carol in the world on the left in the bottom left corner facing east in front of a row of tennis balls. We don't know where they are exactly though. We want Carol to go across that row and clean up all the tennis balls ending up on the other side. Let's go and write this program in our editor. For this program, we want Carol to walk down the entire row and clean up all of the tennis balls along her way. So a few things that we need to do, we first need to establish our main function. So let's do that. We're going to write function main and eventually we'll want to call that function. So I'll just add our calling of the main function down here at the bottom. So we've already got that in place. Now, we're going to probably use a control structure to get Carol to continue moving forward as long as her path is clear. So we don't want her to run all the way into that wall at the end, but we do want her to keep moving if there's no wall in front of her. So let's take a look at how we might do this in our docs. So under Carol, we have a lot of conditions that we can use for Carol. Each one of these ends with a parenthesis, so make sure that we have the uh, before and after parentheses at the end of these conditions. And we probably want to use this first one. The front is clear. So while the front is clear, we want Carol to continue moving forward. Let's go ahead and write that. While front is clear, and then don't forget those parentheses, and our curly brackets. So while the front is clear, we want her to do something. We definitely want her to continue moving while the front is clear. So I'm going to write that in here now. So we'll use the move command and we'll go ahead and call that. So while it's clear, we want her to continue moving. We also want her to pick up a ball if there is a ball that's present. And if we look over here at Carol conditions, balls present is another condition that we can use here. So let's go ahead and write that in our main function as well. If balls present, and don't forget those parentheses again, and then we're going to use our curly brackets. What do we want her to do if there's a ball present in that space? We want her to take the ball. And I included the if balls present before the move uh, function. Uh, primarily because if there is a ball that happens to be in that first space before she begins moving, we want to make sure that she picks that ball up as well. So while the front is clear, go ahead and continue moving. Let's run this code and see how it works so far. And Carol did, in fact, go all the way across the row and continue picking up balls along the way. However, when she gets to the very end of that row, she doesn't have a clear path in front of her, so she doesn't pick up the last ball. Well, this is an edge case that we need to take care of by adding another if statement here at the bottom. So we're going to add if balls present, and don't forget those parentheses again, and our curly brackets, we want her to take that last ball. So let's go ahead and run this code now and see what happens. All right, Carol does in fact collect all of the balls on her way across that bottom row. What we just saw was called the fence post problem. We thought we solved it, but there was one extra thing we forgot. If we look at this picture of a fence post where there's four feet of fence, the posts are separated by one foot. We notice that it requires five fence posts. So that fence post error that we had is forgetting that last case. 
either at the beginning or at the end of our loop. That's an example of using different control structures to solve a problem. Now it's your turn to practice more with control structures.